The next thing we need to do is we need to get the uh, trace imagery in each one of the sketch planes that are determined by these former locations. So let's start with A, and I say sketch, edit sketch. Uh, when the sketch moves all the way off like that, when it flat views, it's out of center. You need to flat view and center to bring it back into the center of the screen here so they can see it clearly. And I click on my setup. I go ahead and select that same texture. I do the same steps I did before. Reset the ratio, turn on the aspect ratio lock, set this for 72 inches like so, and uh, I'm in good shape. Let me go ahead and zoom out here and show you that this area, this is what I want to see on the former sketches. So I want to move this down into the center and I want this fuselage outline to line up with my polygons that I made here to help me understand where the shape is. So I'll zoom in on it a little bit and uh, if I rotate a little bit I'll be able to see those polygons, see those outlines that I made there. Um, sometimes they're a little easier to see if you have them selected when you leave the sketch, but I think we'll be okay here. Um, so let me flat view here and uh, go to my setup and click on modify. We have it at 72 inches. Now one thing you don't want you don't want to do here is you don't want to um, click with your left mouse button or roll your mouse wheel. When it's on modify, it will change the. Uh, the size and position of this bitmap. So we don't want to do that. So I'm thinking that this looks pretty good. I can see the edge of my outline here and it looks pretty good there. I'm going to turn off my modify and rotate the view a little bit and see if we're okay. Oops, it was on. See if we're okay top to bottom. And on the bottom it looks like it's down a little bit low. On the top it looks like it's up a little bit high. Can you see that? That's probably because the, uh, the actual trace image uh, is a little bit bigger in the front view, the image, uh, than it is in the others. And so I could m modify the size here a little bit to make it conform. Uh, why don't we do that? I'll say modify and instead of 72 here, uh, sorry, not modify, instead of 72 I'm going to try uh, 70 and uh, then we will rotate the view and see if we're pretty good there and we've gone uh, maybe okay I need to move it up a little bit I'll click on modify move it up so that it lines up with the top and the bottom and uh, that doesn't look too bad we're going to settle for that at 70 inches and again that's because this is actually a little bit bigger in the trace image than the other two views um, I want to uh, flat view uh, on the front and make sure that I'm centered uh, side to side and it uh, looks a little bit small here now but I think it's going to be good. So we will accept that and we have our position in Sketch A set so that the um, let's rotate it again you can see that it's lining up with those two. As I draw my former polygons I'll use this image to help me understand the size and shape of the former polygons as they move backwards. The next thing I need to do is I need to put this in each one of these other sketches I use the location on the trace tab or trace panel and I say store. That stores this image and location in, on this sketch. I go to the next sketch and say edit sketch. I go to the location and say restore and active. And that puts it in exactly the same spot. Let's do it one more time here on camera so you can see it. Sketch, edit sketch, location, restore and active. Alright, I'll do the rest of these off of camera and then we'll start again. Alright, I've finished putting the trace image in the 10 former sketch planes. Uh, so anytime we edit any of these to add our former polygons, uh, the sketch, the trace will already be exist there. Um, let's go back to um, our side view here and uh, just remind ourselves, now again, uh, where I was, I need to flat view and center in order to bring that uh, back into uh, view. Um, I'm just reminding us here, I have rotate on so I can rotate this, of what we're looking at. Um, now, I need to go ahead and create the former polygons. I normally start at the uh, tallest position on the fuselage, which might be this position F here. So I'm going to edit sketch F, as you can A, B, C, D, E, F. And so I'm going to edit sketch F. And when it's opened up, bring it flat view and center. 
and uh, this is the shape, the largest, highest point on the fuselage that I want to uh, make a former polygon for. One thing I'm noticing here is it's a little difficult to see these lines, and that's in part because my background color is too bright. I'm going to go home here and go to the color editor and um, select more, co select one of the darker colors so you can see it's a little better. We might be able to even do better than that, so I'm going to go a little bit darker on it and say OK. Uh, you can see it's much easier now to see those lines. Alright, so back to the sketch tab. We are working in sketch F. I want to use uh, my line tool in order to create the uh, former poly. I turn on my grid snap. The reason for that is I need the uh, D, the straight side of the D, uh, to be vertical and absolutely centered to the uh, um, to the drawing here. So I'm going to uh, start here, and go straight down, and click at the bottom of this form. Uh, now I can turn off my grid snap as I come out from here and create the rest of the points of this polygon. Now I'm going to. Uh, make I'm going to realize as I work here that this polygon as it moves back along the fuselage is going to round out so I'm adding points here that I probably don't need uh, for this one segment but I want my polygons or my former polys to have the same number of points so I need these extra points as I move back the fuselage you can think about it as planking um, the plank has to uh, move back along the fuselage uh, if you were building this out of balsa. Um, and so let's rotate that and you can see what I've done here. Now I've drawn according to the trace image. Uh, my outline of my side view of the fuselage here is telling me how high I should be at this point and this point. And it looks like I'm pretty well right on line. That's because we took time to line this up and resize it so that it fit on the trace image. If I continue to rotate and look at the side views, you can see that the fuselage is just a little bit wider than I've drawn the polygon. And um, I think we'll accept that and we'll work as though the trace image on the front view here is uh, the width that we want to work with. And we could, if we wanted to, move this out a little bit to match. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I think it'll look pretty good this way. So we have our first former polygon created and you can see that if I look straight at it, it looks roughly like the letter D. That's why I call this the D method. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to copy that polygon. So I've selected it and yeah, turn this back off. I like to make sure I turn these off when I'm done with them so they don't surprise me. I copy that polygon. I'm going to work towards the nose of the airplane. Uh, so I say sketch, edit sketch on E. And of course this was the beginning, the nose of the airplane. This was the tail. So I'm working from F towards the nose. The next thing I do is paste that polygon into place and deselect it. Use my rotate to look at the side view and see um, whether or not I'm staying consistent with the size. And you can I'll rotate it more so you can see where we're working. This is in the E location. I need to bring this top point down to about that point there. Turn off the rotate. Turn on the grid snap because I want this to stay on the center line and uh, it's easier to keep it right on the center line with the grid snap on. Um, the bottom looks like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn on the rotate again and look at the side view and uh, the fuselage is not changing shape very much there. We're going to leave that the same width. Um, so all I need to do now is to flat view and move these points in a way that would uh, be consistent with the shape of the fuselage. Uh, now here is where you need to use your uh, ability to uh, make judgment calls. So I know that the fuselage at this point is more rounded than it is right up against the wing, so I'm going to bring it down and uh, I'm going to say that this is the shape that I think will look best on this fuselage windshield at this point. Uh, I'll bring this one in a little bit as well. And the rest of the fuselage I'm going to leave just like it is uh, because I think it's uh, straight lines there. Uh, again, think about these points. I mean, we have a point on the F uh, that is sitting here at the corner of the wing mount. And as I move that point not only down but also in, 
um, think about how that planking would change if you were making that out of uh, wooden planks on that fuselage. Alright, so when we have the polygon uh, where we want it, I select it, I copy it, and I edit the next um, uh, sketch, and I paste that in. I rotate my view so that I can see approximately where I am, and as you can see, the bottom still looks like where we are about at the right position. Uh, this point, however, needs to come down, so I'm going to turn off my rotate so I can move my point and bring it down like so. And uh, it looks like uh, this, let me zoom in here, you can see that that position is too high and this position is too low. I need to increase the resolution of the grid. Easy enough to do, grid options, I'll go to eight uh, divisions per inch here and uh, we now have a grid snap that is in between. And so that looks pretty good for me there. I'm going to flat view. Um, before I flat view, Let's rotate the view and get a sense of how the outside is changing here. So the outside fuselage is coming in a little bit. Um, I will bring that point in a little bit. Let's do that right now. I'll click on my rotate, grab this outside point, uh, turn off my grid snap, and move it in so that it's got about the same distance as I do back here from that outside shape, uh, top view shape. Um, okay, let's flat view, and we need to uh, make this uh, fit. Uh, in our front view you can see the front of the fuselage where the windshield interacts with the fuselage and we basically want to uh, go ahead and uh, mimic that now at this location. Uh, this will be the shape of the fuselage as we come back as we build it. And so I'm doing it just like that. I'm not terribly happy with this. I could have, if I was taking more time, had a little more resolution here, another point in the middle of this, but I'm going to accept it. Um, again, I don't believe we are changing our shape down here very much at all, so I'm going to leave it as is. Let's double check that real quick. And uh, uh, from the side view, you can see that we are straight uh, for even another former location. Uh, so we won't need to change those bottom points for a while. All right, I'm happy with that polygon. I'm going to select it and copy it and edit location C, uh, just like this and paste that polygon in, deselect it so it's easier to see, and move. And you can see that we need to bring this point down a little bit here. Uh, we are still okay down here. Uh, from the side view, uh, we need to come in a bit more. So let's first bring this one down. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn off the rotate, turn on the grid snap, because the center point, I want to be on center exactly. That looks real good. Uh, let's rotate the view like so and uh, I get a sense of where I want this outside point here. Uh, turn off my rotate. I don't need the grid snap for this. Select that point and move it in so that its distance is consistent with these coming back through here. That looks pretty good. I flat view and uh, let's get the entire former in position. It looks like we are coming down about like this. Each time I've moved that first point, I've moved it not only down, but also in, so that's I'm staying consistent with that. And uh, on this front view, I don't see uh, the fact that uh, this uh, part of the fuselage is in this far. There's no line here to indicate that, but I know that to be true from the top view uh, that we did. On this bottom here, I'm going to actually start to move these a little bit, um, even though um, the bottom is at the same location. I'm going to start to tuck the uh, fuselage in a little bit as it comes up through here. All right, I'm happy with that. I select that entire polygon and copy it and go to location B and edit the sketch. And paste in the polygon, deselect it so it's easier to see. And now I want to rotate. From the side view, you can see that I'm now um, uh, needing to come up quite a distance on this bottom and quite a ways down on the top.